highlights. Legacy government lists more beneficial programs, policies for residents. House of Representatives urges federal government to involve local refiners in petroleum production. On a foreign scene, United States envoys visit Middle East to push for Israel. Hezbollah cease fire. And in sports, Jaws Butler extends contract with England and Wales Cricket Board. And now the details, I am Akan Usen. The Lagos State Government has reassured residents that more beneficial programs and policies are on the way to further provide relief in the face of the biting economic challenges being faced in the country. Special Advisor to the Governor on Political, Legislative and Civic Engagement, Tajuddin Afolabi, who stated this, reiterated the commitment of Governor Babajide Songwulu's administration to improve the quality of lives of people in Lagos. Afolabi said the laudable initiatives that are already in the pipeline are to further complement the existing ones, such as the Songwulu Listens Financial Assistance Program, Iliraiko Healthcare Scheme that provides citizenry with access to essential health care and the Unjeko discount market that is designed to support communities in Lagos State with affordable food items, among others. Emphasizing the importance of active civic participation in the diverse and dynamic landscape of Lagos, Avalabi said in an effort to foster transparency and civic engagement, the office is also planning a series of events that will be beneficial to Lagosians during the upcoming Civic Week in November. The special advisor appealed to Lagosians to remain unwavering in their support for the government and join hands to build the Lagos of everyone's dreams. The Lagos State Materials Testing Laboratory Agency, LSMTL, is set to direct a fierce quality control mechanism in curbing the influx of substandard building materials used for the construction of projects across the metropolis. As part of stringent measures in averting persistent building collapse, General Manager of the agency, Olayinka Abdul, has called for the collective refusal of consumers to purchase substandard products such as steel, iron rods, electrical cables, as well as the cement used for construction, even right at the point of discharge of such goods in the open market. Abdul made the call during a courtesy visit of a 15-man delegation from the Association of Real Estate Developers of Lagos State, appealing for deliberate and sustained efforts from developers, construction workers, and consumers to check the advent of subpar services emanating from use of items that are below standard, yes, unnecessarily expensive. While enjoying reflection on the Lagos State policy on construction processes, Abdul admonished, that statutory destructive tests should be executed at every stage of erecting structures with non-destructive tests particularly slated for renovation works to long-standing buildings or fire engulfed structures. Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 16, Adibola Hamzat, has warned that the force will not shield officers involved in land grabbing or human rights abuses. He stressed that the force under Inspector General Kaiodi Egbetoku maintains zero tolerance for extortion and other misconduct. Hamzat made a statement in Port Harcourt while addressing journalists ahead a lecture he delivered to officers during his familiarization tour of the River State Police Command. Drivers of commercial buses and taxis in the nation's capital, Abuja, will have to get security clearance from the police and the Department of State Services effective from January 2025. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, News on Week, stated this at the FCT Renewed Hope Youth Empowerment Program in Abuja, saying the move is to curtail kidnapping and cases of one-chance robbery in the FCT. We can noted that any commercial boss or taxi driver who is not cleared by security agencies will not be allowed to operate within the FCT. The Benue State Government has relocated 850 internally displaced persons from Nepa Quarters, North Bank, Makodi, to a newly established mega camp along Banjiba Road in Guma local government area. This is the second relocation of IDPs to the mega camp in October, following the earlier transfer of over 1,000 IDPs from Baka Camp at the 72 military barracks in Makodi. Information Officer of the State Emergency Management Agency, Tema Aga. 
who announced this, explained that a third group from Ijwa camp is also set to be moved to the mega camp soon. Aga noted that the mega camp, which is still under construction, will include essential facilities such as a school, hospital, market, and church, while solar-powered lights, public toilets, and boreholes have already been installed. Now to the rest of the stories. The House of Representatives has called on the federal government to develop a blueprint for the involvement of indigenous refiners in the nation's petroleum production value chain. The House's resolution followed the adoption of a motion moved by the Deputy Minority Whip, George Ozodinobi, on the need to reform and regulate Nigerian petroleum production to integrate artisanal refiners into the value chain. Ozo Dinobi stressed that constitutionally it is crucial to harness the nation's resources to promote prosperity. He argued that lives and revenues have been lost due to the government's inability to recognize, regulate and control artisanal refining of petroleum products. A practice, he said, has been prevalent in the Niger Delta region for decades. In, the federal government says President Bola Tinubu has no intention of discriminating against any region. Describing the recent power outage in the north as unfortunate, Minister of Power Adivayo Adilabu stated this while uh, delivering a, an address during a meeting with Kano state government officials on how to collaborate in improving power supply to the state and across the country. Adilabu emphasized that he and his team are on a working visit to Kano to inspect installations and other infrastructure in the region and to collaborate with the ministry to invest in power generation and distribution while granting 10 states the authority to generate power. Today is World Cities Day. The United Nations General Assembly designated October 31 as World Cities Day to greatly promote the international community's interest in global urbanization, push forward cooperation among countries in meeting opportunities, addressing challenges of urbanization, and contributing to sustainable urban development around the world. The day, also known as Urban October, was launched by UN Habitat in 2014 to emphasize the world's urban challenges and engage the international community towards the new urban agenda. This year's theme, Youth Leading Climate and Local Action for Cities, aims to showcase the crucial role of local government and young people in addressing urban climate challenges. <laughs> Now to foreign news. Senior American officials have returned to the Middle East to try to reach a ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. This is as the Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Mikati expressed cautious optimism about a potential deal. Middle East coordinator to President Joe Biden, Brett McGurk, and Amos Hochstein, who have led negotiations in the conflict with Hezbollah, are in Israel for talks with the country's authorities, although it is not clear whether any progress could be made ahead of the U.S. presidential election next week. Since the conflict escalated five weeks ago, Israel launched widespread airstrikes across Lebanon and a ground invasion of areas near the border. At least 2,200 people have been killed in the country and 1.2 million others displaced, mostly Shia Muslims heightening sectarian tensions, tensions and adding pressure on public services that are already struggling after years of a severe economic crisis. <music> now sports. Jews. Joss Butler has extended his central contract with the England and Wales Cricket Board by a year. White ball captain Butler, who is 34, is already one year into his existing two-year deal. He joins test skipper Ben Stokes in signing until the autumn of 2026 after the all-rounder agreed a new deal at the beginning of October. Director of England men's cricket Rob Key said the strength and depth of talent across England's men's red and white ball cricket is clear in the quality of players who are centrally contracted. Butler is currently recovering from a calf injury that has ruled him out since June, with Liam Stevenson standing in for the tour of West Indies. And just before we go, drive slowly. Your windshield wipers, use your windshield wipers and turn on your headlights when driving in the rain. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms. On X at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram, 
Lagos Traffic Radio 961. On YouTube, subscribe and watch us live on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website on www.trafficradio961.ng. that the Songwolu administration received the reviewed version of Lagos Tourism Master Plan 2020 to 2030. You can get more details on the Lagos State Government's website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. The Lagos State Government has reassured residents that more beneficial programs and policies are on the way to further provide relief in the face of the mighty economic challenges being faced in the country. The House of Representatives has called on the federal government to develop a blueprint for the involvement of indigenous refiners in the nation's petroleum production value chain. We also told you that senior American officials have returned to the Middle East to try to reach a ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. And in sports, Josh Butler has extended his central contract with the England and Wales Cricket Board by a year. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. And that ends the news broadcast compiled by Adewale Oluwakoroku. I am Akan. Usen. Thanks for listening and please stay safe. Good evening.